Hi guys, now we're back for session 16 and today we're going to talk about EKG interpretation. There is so much to talk about, we're not going to be able to discuss it all in one session, so we'll probably have another one or two sessions. In the meantime, if you'd like to learn more, please go to dearnurses.com and take a look at what is wrong with this EKG part one. So let's talk a little about Ali, who's just been floated to the ICU. Now, sometimes a nurse has to be floated to the ICU because someone who normally works there calls in sick or has got an emergency, and then you're stuck. You get there, and you just don't know how to read an EKG, and you're thinking, well, like Ali's thinking, I'm just going to ignore those waves. Well, that's not good enough. They look like funny waves to her, but indeed they aren't. Take a look at what could happen if you ignore those funny waves. You might wind up with a patient who does not respond and maybe in ventricular fibrillation, which is rather deadly, which is in essence is what is called a cardiopulmonary arrest. You don't want that to happen. So if you want to take a look at the clinical setting step-by-step -step, chapter 14 to learn more what happens when a patient is in cardiopulmonary arrest. So we are going to take a look at the conduction system of the heart to understand what happens when we look at an EKG. Now, the heart is a pump, we already know that, and what triggers the whole system of this conduction system, which is like when the light bulb goes on, is the sinoatria node. The sinoatria node is in the, uh, located in the right ventricle, I'm so sorry, the right atrium. When this fires, like the light bulb is turned on, it triggers an impulse which causes the atria to contract. Then the impulse is carried on to the AV node, which is the atrioventricular node, which will contract, causing the vent once it is fired, causes the ventricles to contract. That's when everything is working and there's a normal healthy heart, like in the case of this girl, you can see she's playing tennis, she has no heart problems. Here is this young guy, Tim. He's running, he has no heart problems. Take a look at the P, the QRS, and the T, because the P means the atria has contracted because the sinoatria node has fired. The QRS, the ventricles have contracted, that's because the AV node has fired. And then the T means there's a short resting time. Of course, there's a lot more to this system, but we are not going to be able to go into too many details right now. So we're going to talk about exactly what you would expect to find when you read an EKG. When you look at an EKG, we talked about the sinoatria node fires. What would you see on an EKG? You would expect to see a P wave. And that P wave usually has a duration. It's counted in seconds. These are small blocks. Each one of these blocks should equal 0 0.04 seconds. The normal P wave should be 0.12 to 0.20, which means if it extends a little longer, it's called a first degree AV block. But this may be insignificant. It does not necessarily mean anything is wrong. 0.28, you can get a, Q, a, P, a P of 0.28 without having any significant problems. Next, let's look at the QRS. QRS. What does it signify? It signifies the atrioventricular node has now fired, causing an impulse to go over to the ventricles, and they contract. Then the T wave, like we said, is the short resting time of the heart. The normal QRS complex is usually less than 0.10. When it starts getting very wide, that's not a very good sign, which we will later discuss. That short resting time of the heart is the T wave, and many times when there's injury to the heart, you might get the T wave facing the other way, which is inverted, but we don't have time to go discuss that now. What generally happens if the sinoatria node does not do its job, the heart has a desire to keep working. So you will find that an irritable focus within the atria takes over the job of the sinoatria node, and that's why we wind up with Atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter simply caused by an irritable focus in the atria taking over the work of the sinoatria node, which can lead to great problems because atrial fibrillation is very rapid. Being very rapid, it means it must be very exhausting for the patient having their heart beat so rapidly, pumping all that blood through over and over again. And this can lead to, of course, atrial fibrillation has been isolated as one of the causes for stroke because blood clots can form. What you have is a heart 
there's not actually, the atria is not completely emptying, it's quivering, and that's not a good sign. That's why it's usually slowed down with medication. So here we have a P wave, then we have the QRS and the T. Sinoatria node fires, that's the P, atria contracts. Then we have the AV node, the QRS, ventricle contracts, and the T is the rest in time. But then take a look here, there is no P, which means what? The atria did not contract, which means no blood is being pumped through the heart. That's probably why you will find patients start complaining of chest pain and shortness of breath if this keeps up. Wherever there's no P, there's no continuous blood flow. Now let's take a look at what this means. Sinus, sinus bradycardia, all it means is a heart rate under 60. You've got your P, QRS, T. Everything's normal. Many athletes have this type of heart rate. Then you have what is considered to be normal for the average person. The P, the QRS, and the T is all present, and the heart rate between 60 to 100. Now we have the same P, QRS, T, sinus tachycardia, which means the heart rate is greater than 100. It does not always mean that something is wrong. You can have this if a patient just has been doing something very exciting. Even sometimes patients who have visitors, their heart rates start to get higher than normal, and then it goes away once they get back to rest. Some people who have fevers might have increased heart rate. So you have to look at that patient clinically and see if that heart rate, the increase, is really significant. Are they having symptoms? Are they having chest pain, shortness of breath? Then it becomes significant. Just because a patient has a slight increase in heart rate does not necessarily mean that something is wrong. So we intend to discuss more about what you would expect to find on the EKG, what is normal, what is abnormal. And in order to make it easy on yourself, if you know what's normal, then you know what's abnormal. The P, the QRS, and the T is what you would expect to find in the normal EKG. So if a P is missing, something is wrong. If the QRS is missing, something is wrong. If you have a flat line, something is very wrong. So we'll discuss that later. Have a great weekend. And stay posted for more clinical situations.